The Stuart 7A model steam plant, this is part 9, a slight modification to the reversing bracket. If you've been watching the previous episode, you will realise that although the reversing bracket fitted OK, there's a bit of a problem. I can't get any steam into the steam chest because the bracket's in the way. And why is the bracket in the way? Well, it's because the engine was built back to front. Really, the steam inlet should be on the other side of the steam chest. I've had all the usual suggestions from viewers, but I'm going to do it this way. First of all, I remove the bracket and scribe a line on it like this. Then it's over to my old bandsaw with a very blunt blade at the moment to cut along the scribe line. Because the blade is blunt, it's wandering about all over the place. I'm having to angle the piece so the cut follows the line. Note to self, change the bandsaw blade at the earliest convenience. Once I chopped the part in half, I cleaned it up on the belt sander. Now all I need to do is make a longer part and silver solder it to the bit that I've cut off. So it's back to the blunt bandsaw and I'm cutting a piece of brass and you will notice that I'm cutting it by holding the piece of brass up on its end. By doing it this way, the cut is going to be at 90 degrees to the main piece of metal. And in no time at all, I end up with the piece that I need, which is nice and square. Here, I'm just mocking it up against the steam chest. The next thing to do is to scribe some lines on the piece of brass that correspond with the positions of the existing holes in the steam chest. Then I take the piece of brass over to the drilling machine and first of all I go through with a centre drill, followed by a twist drill. This is clearance size for 7BA. I repeat this process until I have three holes drilled in the piece of brass, which hopefully will correspond with the positions of the holes in the steam chest. The next thing to do is cut the piece of brass to the correct thickness. I still have the quarter of an inch diameter cutter in the milling machine, so I may as well use that. I could use a larger diameter cutter, just like the one that a man called Dan sent me, and that would easily do the job in one pass. Saving time though is always a good thing, that's why I'm using the existing cutter in the milling machine, no setup time. A few weeks back, this very kind viewer called Dan sent me a t-shirt, a really good t-shirt with a picture of a keyboard on the front. He messaged me to see if I'd received it and I said yes thank you very much, he said there's something else on its way to you. So a couple of days later I received in the post a pair of earrings. Now this was a bit of a puzzle, I thought, why would a viewer send me a pair of earrings? I must be the least feminine person that I know. As they were not much good to me, because I didn't find them to be a suitable fashion accessory, I gave them away to a customer who came in the studio. And then a milling cutter arrived, so Dan hadn't sent me the earrings. And it was only when I sent my youngest daughter a message on Facebook, I noticed the link that she sent me saying, can I have these for Christmas? A pair of earrings which I duly bought and forgot all about. Anyway, that's a senior moment. It's time now to join part A to part B. I'm using my brazing hearth and my blowtorch to silver solder the two parts together. After silver soldering the part, as usual, I let the part cool to black. And in this clip, I'm quenching the part in some water. And just in case you're wondering, the skin on top of the water is some overspray because I paint near this tub of water. I suppose it has its benefits, having a skin of paint on top of the water, at least it stops it evaporating. Now it's time to profile the part using the belt sander. In this clip I'm working on the area where the new piece meets the old piece. Once I clean and polish up this part, the joint should be invisible. I've already checked that the holes are in the right place, so the rest of this is plain sailing. I put a couple of bolts through the original exhaust flange, and now, using a scriber, I'm marking the position to drill a larger hole in the center for the steam inlet. After accurately center drilling the part, right in the middle of the scribe circle, I'm drilling all the way through using a 7 seconds of an inch twist drill. Now it's time to bolt the part to the steam chest and see what it looks like. I'm sure all of the experts will notice that the piece of brass overlaps the steam chest slightly on the left hand side. This is not a problem because there is a steam chest cover to go on there so everything will look fine when the steam chest cover is fitted. The main thing is, all the bolts fit OK. I have a bit more reprofiling on the top of this, I'm going to curve it into the steam chest. You'll see it in the next episode. A quick test fit of the steam chest, and as you can see, everything's fine, it fits perfectly. So now it's time to take out all the bolts, because I'm going to have to clean up the part in the acid bath. When making components for steam engines, whether it be piping or parts like this, it's really important to make sure that you remove every trace of the flux residue. So now it's time to put this part in the acid bath for a few hours. Here's my acid bath full of a very weak acid. As you can see, the bones have not yet dissolved. 
I think maybe I need to increase the concentration. This is Kettle Descaler called Kill Rock K. It's not the best thing to use for dissolving bones. Anyway, I'd just like to mention something. It suddenly got very cold here the other day. And my air conditioning unit, which also is a heater, was not really heating the workshop to the right temperature. These aircon units are great in a house, but they're not the best thing to have in sub-zero temperatures in a shed out in the garden. Here's the unit in question. The ones I have in the house are both Mitsubishi units. This is a Samsung. It's a bit cheaper. Luckily, I have this in the workshop, given to me by a good friend of mine. It's a propane space heater, so I bought a gas canister, and this is what it does, as you can see. It gets very hot, and once the air in the room is warm, the normal air conditioning unit takes over. I'll just get a closer look at the heat source. Another camera bites the dust. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.